We're going to make some batteries from potatoes, of all things, and we're going to use these to power various electronic devices. Uh, now, strictly speaking, what we make with a potato is called an electrochemical cell. We're going to use a potato, we're going to use a screw, the sort of thing you might have in your garage, and we're going to use a carbon rod. This is the thing that pencils are made out of, or for charcoal, for drawing. If I push the carbon rod into the potato, and I push the screw into the potato, we get a chemical reaction taking place between the conductors and the chemicals in the potato, and that charges the electrodes or the conductors up. So what we're doing is we're converting the chemical energy into electrical energy. Now if I wire up my meter, we wire up one connection of the meter onto the screw and one onto the carbon rod, we see that the meter works. We get about just under one volt from a zinc plated screw and a carbon rod and the potato. This is called an electrochemical cell. We've got to now make a few of these and wire them up to get as much electricity as possible to make a battery. Now the voltage from one potato isn't very great, so I'm wiring them up to get a bit more voltage and this is a circuit called a series circuit where I connect one of the screws, which is negative, to one of the rods, which is positive. And this way we make a little circuit with the potatoes. We can add the voltages together. So now at uh, this end, we've got a plus, and this end we've got a minus, we've got twice the voltage. And it's enough to power a little calculator. I think you can see there that the calculator is actually working. So if you were stranded on a desert island and your batteries ran out on your calculator, you can make your homemade battery from a couple of potatoes to power your calculator. So now we're going to wire up three potatoes in series. So we should get three times the voltage that we get from a single potato cell. And we're going to wire it up to little LED. So that's three potatoes. And we've got enough power, I think you can see, to get the LED to light. So if I just connect it and disconnect it, you can see that the light's going on and off. If you wire them up, they'll last about five days continuously powering an LED. Because these modern LEDs take so little power. So this is three potatoes again in series. So we got three times the voltage from a single potato electrochemical cell. And I wired it up to a little circuit that's often used in burglar alarms. It just flashes a little light. So you can see that flashing there. So we've got enough electrical power, enough voltage, to power a little electronic circuit, which is flashing the light. Now this is a, an electrical device called a buzzer. It's a bit like the thing you get in a smoke detector that makes a bleep. And it's supposed to work on about one and a half volts. And so we should have that here with the three batteries in series. Uh, but if I wire it up, you don't really get any noise at all. And the reason is, although we've wired up the voltages to get a higher voltage here, this is called a series circuit, we haven't actually got the current required to make this buzzer to work. So we need a different circuit. This is called a series circuit for adding the voltages. But what we actually need now is a parallel circuit to add the currents to get the current needed to run the buzzer. So we've actually got to modify this circuit now to make it into what's called a parallel circuit. So now we've still got three potatoes in circuit, uh, but we're wiring them up in a different circuit. This is called a parallel circuit. And in this case, all the carbon rods are wired up to all the carbon rods. You can see I've done them in red. And all the screws are wired up to all the screws. I've done those in black. In this particular circuit, the voltage from each of the cells, the potato cells, uh, remains the same, but the currents add. This way we can get more electrical current rather than voltage. So we've only got the voltage from a single cell, but we've got three times the current. And if we wire up the buzzer, you can hear now that we've got enough current to get the buzzer to work. So we've got potato morse code, or potato power morse code. So the parallel circuit adds the currents, and the series circuit adds the voltages. In this particular case, this little buzzer works on a very low voltage, but it needs a little bit more current. So the parallel circuit works, but in the other circuits, the series circuit works. 
So how you wire up your cells is very important to how you're going to use the electrical power. Now what we've done here now with this amazing mass of potato cells all wired up to form a giant battery, we've got five in series and we've got five of those all in parallel. So the result is we should have five times the voltage and five times the current of the simple battery electrochemical cell. So this makes a super, sud, a super spud battery and we've got about five volts from here, which is about right, and I'm going to wire it up to the radio and see if we can hear anything. We can. So our simple spud battery, well not that simple, it's quite complicated, but we're making electricity simply by using the potatoes, screws and carbon rods. We've got enough power to power a little radio. We're going to use batteries to make some potatoes. Right, no, we're not. <laughs> <laughs> <Can> the, uh. <laughs> now that would be a challenge. <laughs>